God told me what to share on, I'm like, oh, God. But everyone's heard it so many times. Like, why share it again? It's like, but he hasn't, no one's heard it from me before. So I love what Sorrel said about the mountains because this morning God wants to take us up the mountain. And I really feel that God is transitioning us to go higher and higher and higher. And there's so many beautiful prophetic words that's going around at the moment. Um, even Linda sharing about ascending. Um, God gave me a picture of eagles, and, um, but mountains the whole time. And I'll touch on that now. But I really feel, because that's what I got in my spirit as well, is come up the mountain with me. Ascend with me. Come higher. Come higher. And... Um, for us to be able to go higher, there's stuff that we need to leave behind, and there's a place that we need to reach in our lives, in our hearts, that we, where we have to really see God. We have to really meet with God to be able to go higher with Him. And um, when God told us, begin, well, God told us many, many years ago, we will move to Cape Town, and we've patiently waited for God to just make the move for us and beginning of last year we we felt okay this is the move this is what we have to do so we literally pack up everything we put our life in us in our bus and we came to Cape Town and um, we were super super grateful for friends like Jock and Melissa that just open up their house without knowing why we're coming or what we're doing. And they just said, come, come stay with us and let's hear the Lord and see what's happening. And um, they were so part of our journey of coming here. And every time that we went anywhere, I'm like, God, but what is your plan? What is your purpose with us coming to Cape Town? It's not that we had this big desire because Cape Town is so beautiful or anything, and, um, but what's your desire for us to be here? What is it that we need to bring or what do you want to show us? And God kept on saying the whole time to me, back to basics. Back to basics, simplicity. And then I'm like, okay, God, but what does that mean? It's like coming back to the heart of worship, coming back to the heart of what church should look like and not what the world has created it to be. And that's what I had in my mind the whole time. I'm like, I'm stepping in here and I'm coming back to the basics of what God wants, not what the world wants to create it to be. And it's so simple. It's so simple. And we have complicated it so much, but it's so simple. And um, so I want, to, I want to read an exodus a bit. We are reading through the Bible with our kids, and we're in Exodus at the moment, and while reading it, I was just like, whoa, but this is just so profound. And um, I want to start with, um, let me see, Exodus 34. Oh, I had a joke. I forgot about it. <laughs> what kind of car would Jesus drive? <laughs> a Chrysler. <laughs> Which nursery song would Jesus have heard the most? Mary had a little lamb. <laughs> I just thought that was very funny. I thought I wanted to start off with a joke just so that we can lift the moment and then I forgot. Okay, Exodus 34, verse 4 to 10. So just before that, God told Moses to cut out the stone tablets and then to come up to the mountain so that he can give him the agreement. And um, this part was just so profound for me, um, verse 4 to 10, and says, So Moses chiseled out two tablets of stone like the first ones, 
Early in the morning, he climbed Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him, and he carried the two stone tablets in his hands. This was like, oh. Then the Lord came down in a cloud and stood there with him, and he called out his own name, Yahweh. So God called out his own name towards Moses, saying, Yahweh. The Lord passed in front of him, in front of Moses, calling out, Yahweh the Lord. So I guess that this is the first time ever that Moses heard those words, that Moses heard the name Yahweh or the Lord, because then God says, um, so now he's explaining who he is. The God of compassion and mercy, I am slow to anger and filled with unfailing love and faithfulness. I lavish unfailing love to a thousand generations. I forgive iniquity, rebellion, and sin, but I do not excuse the guilty. I lay the sins of the parents upon their children and their grandchildren, and their entire family is affected, even children in the third and fourth generations. So Moses immediately threw himself to the ground and worshipped, and he said, O Lord, if it's true that I have found favor with you, then please travel with us. And then he just explains that all the people are stubborn, but make them your people again. But when I read this, and even in the, the children's version that we read to our kids, it was even so powerful, just exclaiming, so here comes God meeting with Moses, and he's like, Yahweh, and then explaining who he is. And then Moses encountered God for the first time ever as the Lord. Yahweh, and he felt he couldn't do anything else but fell down and worshipped him. And I realized if we can just grasp this, like who God is, there's nothing else we would want to do than to fall down at his feet and worship him. And God wants to show us, each one of us, a new name of who he is. And we sang it so beautifully, Adonai, El Shaddai, Elohim, he lives in me. And God wants to reveal those names, those characters of who he is. He wants to reveal to us so that we can and worship him. And um, one of my favorite stories to tell the kids is the one about the Exodus, how Moses brings the people out. But the thing that I love about it is every time that Moses goes to Pharaoh, and the children's Bible says it actually better, he uses these words. He's like, let my people go so that they can worship me in the desert. And we have to realize that that's God's original intent, back to basics, simplicity. Why did God want them out? He wanted to encounter them. He wanted them to come and worship them. The the other translation says that they can make prepare a feast for God, an offering unto God. But God's whole heart, his whole desire is for us to worship him so that he can come and encounter us. So that's just always stuck with me. Let my people go so that they can come worship me. So yes, there was a promise in it. I will take them to the promised land. There's a promise in it. But that wasn't God's whole in destination, his heart, his desire was the worship, the encounter, the relationship part with us. Okay, and then Exodus 34, <clears throat> 28 to 29. Just find mine. So Moses remained there on the mountain with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. In all that time he ate no bread and drank no water. And the Lord wrote the terms of the covenant, the Ten Commandments, on the stone tablets. When Moses came down Mount Sinai carrying the two stone tablets inscribed with the terms of the covenant, he wasn't aware that his face had become radiant because he had spoken to the Lord. The first thing our kids asked when we read this is, 
How did he survive for 40 days and 40 nights without anything to eat or anything to drink? And I realized, you know, when you're in God's presence, like it's just a different place. It's a different realm. You don't need anything else. It's not our physical bodies that's there. It's our spirit that's there, that's connecting with him. And um, I was looking at our mountain while I was at just one stage sitting outside and preparing. And I was looking at our beautiful, we live in full clip. We are very blessed and honored to be able to stay there. And um, we have this beautiful view of the mountain there. And I was sitting there, and suddenly I got this picture of, you know, when you read the Bible to the kids, you have this kid's version picture in your mind of how everything happened. So um, the Israelites coming out of Egypt and going through the Red Sea. So you have this picture, how it would be illustrated in the kid's Bible, which is fine because it's a kid's Bible. And when I looked at this mountain, suddenly I was grasped into reality. And I realized, but whoa, what would it feel like and look like in reality? Being up the mountain, it completely being covered by God's presence and his glory. And just standing there worshiping him. Like, it would be so intense. So if you can imagine from the... the Israelite side, looking up this mountain and this, like this thunder rumbling and there's this fire and everything, like I would also be scared. <laughs> like it would be like a reality, like not the children's Bible version, reality of it. God is so powerful. God is so sovereign. God is so big, way bigger than our little minds can comprehend. And he is calling us higher to meet with him so that he can show us that, that part of him. And he wants to lavish his glory on us so that us too can come out of his presence shining like Moses did. He wants that for us. Like, why not? Like, why not? Awesome. And I got this thought also... I love worshiping so much. I love being in God's presence. And then suddenly God showed or asked me, but when you're in my presence, what is there? What do you feel? What do you experience? Like we know the scripture says um, in God's presence there's fullness of joy. Do we really know what that means? Do we really, really know that when we enter into God's presence, into a time of worship with him, that there cannot be any depression in that moment. There cannot be any anxiety in that moment. There cannot be any confusion, any fear, any, like anything that we struggle with, our doubts. It cannot be there because that's not in God. And if you haven't, when you walked away from God's presence or out of that moment and you didn't feel God's love and God's joy, God's freedom, God's glory in that moment, then you were holding back. Then you weren't fully engaging in what God has for you. And the cool thing is while we were worship, God actually showed me is that There's like different levels of where we are in our relationship with God. And whenever we choose to go deeper and deeper, He meets you where you're at. You don't have to be where the person next to you is, so deep into worship and so much further in their relationship and their knowledge of God. God wants this. He only wants your heart. He wants your surrender your willingness to just come and be fully submerged in who he is, leaving everything aside, and that means everything aside, to go and to connect with his heart, connect with what, with what he has for you. I love when Ariella wants our attention. That's our youngest daughter. 
she's very adamant, very, very adamant. And um, ever since she was young, if she wanted to show us something or wanted us to play with her and you're quickly busy, she will tell you, no, put down your phone. This is my time. So she's very like, you have to, are you coming now? Are you coming now? Are you coming now? So you can't, like you literally don't have any other choice. You have to stop what you're doing to spend time with her and then you can go on with your stuff. And that's what we should do with God. It's like we should just choose to put everything aside and just meet with Him. Like I really feel that there's, a, I mean, we all know with everything leading up to now, we can just see the shift that's happening and that the, the place where God wants us to go is so much more than what we can even fathom or comprehend. But for us to reach that place in our secret place, in our own time, where no one's looking, where there's no one around us, that's the important part. That's where you choose to put aside and press in, go deeper, go deeper, go up higher, go up the mountain with God. It's not just here for a Sunday. This is, we need this. It's part of what we have to do is community and stuff. But this isn't the only thing. Your secret place is with God. Your own time where you have to connect with him. And then I want to go to Exodus 33. Just jump a little bit back. Exodus 33, verse 7 to 11. <clears throat> now Moses used to take a tent and pitch it outside the camp, some distance away, calling it the tent of meeting. Anyone inquiring of the Lord would go to the tent of meeting outside the camp. And whenever Moses went out to the tent, all the people rose and stood at the entrances to their tents, watching Moses until he entered the tent. As Moses went into the tent, the pillar of cloud would come down and stay at the entrance while the Lord spoke with him. Whenever the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance to the tent, they all stood and worshipped, each at the entrance of their tent. The Lord would speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. Then Moses would return to the camp, but his young aide, Joshua, son of Nun, did not leave the tent. So everywhere they went and they set up camp, just a little bit outside of the camp, Moses would put up a meeting tent because he understood how important it was to bring the presence, to have a place where they can meet with God and just worship. And now, although how it worked that time was a bit different, I see the significance in this. Moses understood worship. Moses understood going into the presence and he wanted to create a place where people can see it. I mean, they, they just saw him going in and saw that God's presence is there. And, they, and then they started worshipping as well. So Moses understood what it meant to bring the presence of God everywhere they went. And then um, later on, he built a tabernacle. Um, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with it, but it's got the three rooms, the outer court, inner court, Holies of Holies, <laughs> that one. We have had many, many teachings on the tabernacle by Sorrel's dad. And I love the tabernacle because it signifies God's presence. It signifies Jesus as the door. And we enter into God's um, presence, his holiness, through Jesus being cleansed from all our sins, washed completely clean. And then we offer our worship unto him. And then we enter into the holy of holies, the most holy place where, I mean, that's glory. That's where we want to be. And when Jesus died on the cross and the veil was torn between the Holy of Holies and the... Um, now I'm so confused with the three things. 
not the outer court, the middle inner, inner court. And, um, and that path the way for us to have that connection with God ourselves. So Jesus and God's whole intention was for us to be able to come into a place of worship and come into his presence and experiencing him for ourselves. So after the tabernacle, we become the tabernacle. We ourselves become God's dwelling place for his presence to be everywhere we go. And we need to just realize I think that we have so many caps on our brains sometimes of what God's whole intention was, what was his heart for all of this, and we want to make it so complicated, but it's so simple, just realizing what's God's whole heart, his whole intention of having us the whole time is to connect with us, to see his face, to see his beauty, and... um, my time is running out a little bit. So I want to end off with this. And just as a reminder that we can access His presence anytime we want, anywhere. It doesn't have to be this very put on your candles, soaking music, holy moment every time. We just invite His presence. I love the story of Bill Johnson where with his family, whenever they would go out to a place, they would sit in the car in the parking lot and just for a moment invite God's presence. It's like, come Holy Spirit, just come, let your presence be on us and let it be so tangible that when we step into this place where we are going now, people will experience your presence above the presence that is there. And that's a a, a daily act that we can do. It's just, Holy Spirit, we invite your presence just to come in anything that we do. Just come, your presence above anything else. And I want to end off with this one, Psalms 27 verse 4. If I can find it on mine. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only, uh, this only do I seek, that I might dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek Him in His temple. And this so resound with my heart and what I want to encourage you with is, I mean, we've, we know what this year has already been like. <laughs> and... Um, we know that it doesn't make the rest of the year easy. But if we desire to seek God's face in everything that we do, to see his beauty, to allow him to just be who is in every situation that we face, and to allow ourselves to press in deeper, then we can do this. All things are possible. So I want to encourage you with this, is just to have a heart of worship. And every day remind yourself the simplicity of that, the simplicity of God's gospel, simplicity of why God created us to be on this earth. There's a simplicity in it, but there's a greatness in what we can achieve through this simplicity. And I want to, in this moment... Roxy, you are amazing. (laughs) Um, I want to call you higher on God's mountain. It's just before half, so if any one of you have to go, you're more than welcome to go. But just for five minutes, come and meet with God up on the mountain where he is ready for you. He's ready to meet with you. He's ready to tell you, I am Yahweh, the Lord. He's ready just to lavish his beauty on you. Are you ready for that? (laughs) Okay, so let's just say, I have a song um, 
that I just want to play in the background that really, yeah, just takes me very deep into God's presence. So feel for as long as you want. This is between you and God, no one else. So just enjoy His presence. Thank mm-hmm. you. 